In this discussion, you might be triggered. So we are about to talk about is selling art selling out? And by the end of this episode, you are going to be convinced that if you do not sell your art, then you are a sellout. Stay tuned till the end. Art is part of the home. I bought that. It was like a 180 transition. (laughs) But you didn't sell it for money? Oh, this is so arrogant. Selling isn't bad. Everything they told me is a lie. Business can be its own art form. Brand new ideas being born right here. Nobody agrees with you. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Light Movement Podcast. This is a podcast where we, as professional artists, discuss how you can become successful as an artist without selling your soul to the dark art elitist system. So I'm your host, Jake Dunn, and I'm here with Ellie Milan and Dimitri Milan, both professional artists, and we are super excited to get into this topic. And uh, Ellie, how did this conversation, this topic get brought up, selling your art, selling out? Well, we had a a reel that we posted that... um, wasn't meant to be controversial at all. And um, I said something in the podcast about, well, Demetra actually said that galleries aren't going to take you serious uh, unless you have a big portfolio. And I put out a number of about 30 pieces because that's what I believe every artist needs in order to be in business. And that really bothered quite a few artists. Yeah, and, a lot of artists. And it it began this like really interesting conversation on our Instagram. Uh, I think there was over, you know, to date, like 300 comments um, that was all centered around this idea of selling art. And a lot of artists brought up some really heartfelt interesting um, arguments that their art, uh, you know, means so much to them or that art is supposed to be counterculture. It's supposed to challenge. And if it has to fit into some kind of marketplace, it can't do that. You know, from all the things that we post so far, it seemed to generate this huge conversation. So it's obviously very important uh, to people. And Dimitra and I have very strong opinions about this based on our experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've been selling art for, you know, since 1996. Uh, You've been selling your art since you were 15 years old, what, eight years now? You know, I feel like we're, we're certainly qualified Um, to speak about this. Uh, We're full-time artists and have sold a ton of art and I don't feel like I'm a sellout. Hmm. Okay, so let's let's just break this down a little bit so that people kind of, so that the viewers have a a deeper understanding of like what the actual argument is. So on the one hand, we have people who believe that if you sell your art, you're selling out because art is this um, ethereal, um, magical, purposeful item and if you put a price tag on it or if you sell it then you're feeding into like sort of the capitalistic system and on the other hand you have professional artists who believe that art is so worthy and art is so valuable that you should sell it so that other people can enjoy it and have that in their homes did i encapsulate the argument Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i think on both sides there's you know more yeah but that's basically i think the two Viewpoints. So both of you are professional artists. That means that you've sold your work. So obviously you kind of lean towards one end of the spectrum with the question um, or with the argument at hand. But why do you sell your art? Just so people have like a better understanding. Like what is the reason behind you selling your art? Gosh, I mean, to make money. I mean, I, don't, <laughs> <laughs> just, I want to be the owner of my own business. And art is something that really fulfills me and makes me happy and creating every day. Like I'm so grateful to do that. And the only way I'll be able to do that is by sharing it with others and having other people appreciate it and make the exchange with money to have art in their home. So when people pay for a painting, they, it's like this exchange happens and they're, you always appreciate something more when you pay for it. So it's going to mean more to the collector. If you want your art to be very meaningful and impact people's lives, which that's a huge part of what is so fulfilling about creating art, seeing how art can change people's lives. And I've seen it, you know, time and time again. So when someone, you know, buys the work, it's, they're appreciating it and they're going to receive that when they have the painting, like it's going to bring them so much joy and happiness. They're going to value it so much more when you get something for free or you get something that's, you know, like cheap, you're not going to value it that much. What about you? I mean, very much the same reason Mm -hmm. I decided to, well, first of all, I didn't always feel this way. 
I went to art school and I was indoctrinated into thinking that we make art for art's sake, that that is the highest form of art and art creation. And anything uh, below that is either selling out commercial art. I literally had, um, you know, professors in art school literally say the words, uh, you know, if you make your art to sell it and earn money, then you've sold your soul to the couch art devil. You know, they, wow. they like those exact words. I can even think of the professor who told me that. What was his name? It was I'm a she. Kidding. What but, was her name? <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, yeah. I'm so, no, don't so, say it. <laughs> uh, you know, as a young, impressionable person, I, you know, I was in my early 20s. I bought that. And I remember uh, my brother married a professional artist and she was selling her art. And I was, I judged her like, oh, she's making those dolphin sculptures, you know, to sell and blah, blah, blah. And, and I, I was really judgmental. And so I've, I've come from that kind of mentality and I had all kinds of theories and thoughts about it. And then I hit real life. And I mean, this is just my story. I, I've changed my views since then. But as a young person, I hit real life and I had a choice. I could be a waitress because I did that. I could work at a bank. I did that. I could um, deliver sandwiches. I could deliver pizzas. I mean, these were the jobs that I had. And uh, the bank job was, you know, let's say the best, most professional job. But that to me was being a sellout. I was literally trading my time for money, my precious time that I could be creating, that I could be making something beautiful to offer to the world. And I sold, I, I literally took my time and I sold it to somebody who, a bank, a nameless corporation bank. And we all know how we feel about banks. That's what I sold my life to. That was a sellout. And one day I just woke up and I thought, you know, everything they told me is a lie. I'm selling my soul right now to the bank art, you know, the bank art, the bank <laughs> devil, you know? And it's like, what What am I doing? And I um, changed my, my thoughts uh, immediately and like a revelation. And not very long after that, with a very short period of time, um, I was offered a job as an artist, almost like my nightmare job in art school, you know, and what it was, was painting in a studio for the decorative art market, mm -hmm. you know, like in a studio. And I got paid an hourly wage to produce art that they would sell to hangover couches. I literally, it was like a 180 transition. And in my mind, because it took me a while to like come around to what I feel is evolved into how I feel right now. But at that time I separated and I thought, okay, my new job, my new sellout job, my new way that I'm trading my time for money is making art. So at least while I do, I still had my art, my fine art, my personal art, you know, up here on this um, platform, you know, for one day to do. But at that time I, I justified it thinking, you know, I could either sell my time to work at a bank, or I could sell my time to gain skill, valuable skill, learn a market, learn, you know, new things in the direction that my destiny is. And so I made that choice. And that's how I started, you know, being a professional artist. So at first I did it for the money. Um, and I, I took a skill that I had and I traded it for money. And, and it was totally fine with me. But then later, as I found my voice, I developed my style, I learned, you know, the whole art world and how it all worked. And it took me years and years to do that. Now I've, I've realized the value of selling your art. And the reason it's so important to sell your art is now you're a professional and there's accountability with it, you know, and somebody has to love your art so much that they're willing to give you their hard earned money that they worked for in exchange for that art, then it means something to them. So everything you poured into that art now, you made an exchange with that person and that person gave you something that they worked hard for and now they can reap the benefits of everything that you put in there. Also, if you create a piece of art that, that there's not one person on the planet that would give you money for, you might want to rethink what you're creating. Yeah. Because when somebody buys it, they're in agreement. There's an agreement that happens and they're validating what you put out there. And I don't think that art 
you know, can be so counterculture and challenging and that there's not one soul that agrees with you. I mean, that's kind of arrogant if you think about it. Yeah. That you came up with the one piece of art that nobody agrees with, nobody wants, but it's going to do something to culture because it's challenging it. You know, it's like nobody agrees with you. Yeah. So, so you guys both basically are sort of making the argument that like having money ascribed as the value of art isn't bad, right? Right. Like, yeah, like it's not putting bad at a all. price on art does not, it's not bad or devaluing the purpose behind the art if you put a price on it, if right? Anything, I think it does the opposite. So, so let me just ask you this like, is there a point where you think that like adding a value or adding a monetary value to it, like, is that the only measure of value that art has or? Is that like the main measure measure of value? I think that's a really good question. And back in my art school days, I I, ha- I had that question in my heart mm-hmm. and this was my answer. I had this lofty idea that I was going to put on a show in a gallery and one of my art forms was how I was going to sell the art. That was a part of... So the pieces I were making were... Oh, this is so arrogant. If I think back <laughs> to how I thought, I'm I'm embarrassed. But this is this was what I, my plan was: is I made these paintings that were sort of like how tos or like like lessons in life, and and if somebody valued what that lesson was, you know, I'm gonna do this better. It was like do gooder stuff. You know, if I do this better, or I do that better, and they they valued that, and the title would kind of clue in, clue you in or whatever. And so if they valued that and they wanted it, that was the exchange. Then you were allowed to have the piece. <laughs> but you didn't but sell so, it for money? No. 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 They exchanged. They didn't give me their money. They had to give me the promise that they were going to abide by or live by. So how'd that go for they you? Ha- they would have to sell their soul to you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's so arrogant. How did it go? Well, who made me the moral police? Like, why am I in charge of what's good? And like, you know, it's, but that's how young people think. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how I thought, you know, it's like this, it's not how all young people think. but Young in your mind. Well, I was young and young in my mind. Like I, because you, you think, I mean, I have a teenager. I know, you know, a little bit. Mm -hmm. They, it's like, you're a know-it-all, you know, you think like, I'm going to create this like, you know, and if you promise to do it, then you can have it. It's mm-hmm. yeah, no, it's it's definitely an immature understanding too. I think it's also an immature understanding of money as well. Like I think that people mm-hmm. believing that like it, money is bad is immature because money is just an express. It, it's an expression of energy. That's really kind of what it comes down. Yeah, to. Right. I think that's the root Mon- issue. Money is inanimate. Yeah. And money does not represent, it, it just represents intention. Mm-hmm. If your intentions are good, then the money that 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 fits that intention is good. Mm-hmm. If your intention is bad, then money that fits that intention is bad. You know? Exactly. It's a tool. Yeah. It's a resource. It's a tool. It's yeah. a resource. And most people, they trade time for money, right? And so like, honestly, money, that's why money is like that's why money has values because human beings have collectively sort of well maybe not collectively maybe there are you know a small group of human beings that made this decision for the rest of us but <laughs> that's another concept or subject to discuss but i mean we have collectively decided that this amount of money is representative or you know i'm able to trade this money for this th- item that i couldn't make myself and like that's the value behind it it's like you basically are trading money for time any time that you're using it because instead of you know going and buying that apple you're not you're not buying the apple because uh, you know the apple has a certain amount of value you're buying the apple because you don't have the time to go plant those trees or you didn't plant those trees to grow that apple so you're buying it from someone else who did that you know you're buying the time that they spent harvesting that okay, fruit okay but the argument would be that art isn't a necessity well, I mean, if that's you don't think that art is a necessity, that's a whole other topic. Then, uh, <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I want to dive into that though. Yeah. Then, like, why do you guys do you guys think art is a necessity? I mean, I think it is because there's a lot of people out there. Like, even Elizabeth Gilbert and her book said that, like, the beautiful or is it her book? Big Some, Magic. Yeah, was it Big Magic? Okay, I think so. Um, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, Elizabeth, if you're watching this and I'm getting this wrong, but you can let me know. Um, <laughs> but uh, she said that, you know, the beauty of art is beautiful because it is not uh, necessary. So agree or disagree? 
I like that. I, I think that that it's saying the same thing. To say art is beautiful because it's not necessary is why it's necessary. Mm. So, you know, it's like, Art has become necessary because it isn't necessary. And we, we Yeah, that's deep. Yeah. And so and, and you only know <clears throat> that it's necessary when you own a piece of original art that you love. Mm-hmm. You know, and that that's how you know. That's why I tell artists all the time, if you if you haven't ever sold your work, yeah. go buy a piece of art that it hurts when you buy it. Like feel it. Like you need to you know, it, need, it needs to affect your budget. It needs to affect your your money flow or your cash flow in some way. It has to be a disruptor to your cash flow. And so that you truly appreciate it, go through the entire process. I, I would even venture to say, this is this will really trigger people. You lose any authority Ooh. to speak about whether or not art, you know, you're a sell if if you have never bought a piece of art. Hmm. So if, just to clarify, you lose authority to speak on the subject of whether art buying art is uh, or selling art is making an artist a sellout if you do not buy art. If you've never bought art, yeah. <clears throat> how do you know? How do yeah. you know? You don't know what what value that brings to somebody, so what life true. it brings to somebody. To me, it's hypocritical and arrogant to say that I think I'm saying it so abrasively because I feel so passionate about it. Mm. And and maybe it's because I came from that other side and I was I had those opinions and those deceptions in my heart when I was a young person and I came kind of out of it and I've seen the other side. Mm. And I was in that middle ground where I just really did it for money and I separated the two and whatever. But, you know, so it's been a journey and I think that's why I feel so strongly about it. So I, I want to just dive a little bit deeper into the topic of like art is necessary because it's not necessary. Because, I mean, it it kind of is like, it feels like one of those lofty, possibly uh, elusive thoughts. Yeah. You know? Well, and until you just quoted Elizabeth Gilbert, like I had never thought of that. Yeah. So no, it's, it's, yeah. it's very, it's, re- I love it. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it is a very interesting topic. Yeah. Brand new ideas being born right here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. So Demetra, what is your take on that uh, sort of concept? Like art is necessary because it's unnecessary. Because I, I have an opinion, but I want to hear yours first. I don't know <laughs> that I even agree with that it's unnecessary. That's okay. But like the, where I kind of stand. So but like I think you can tell because like every single person has art in their home. I, it's so hard to find people who don't have any sort of art on their walls. Yeah, honestly from any photography, I mean like any no, kind even, of No, even even in um, you know, lesser developed countries and they're going to have something on their wall. They make art, yeah. yeah art is part of the home. It's part of family human and nature. Yeah. So I don't know that I agree that it's unnecessary. I think so my my concept of it is like basically or my understanding of it is that it is necessary because it's unnecessary because basically that would position art or art is positioned as the fruit of an abundant society so like it depends on the world that you want to live in like obviously we all have like our own definitions of what is necessary and what is unnecessary so if you believe that having sort of an abundant free society is necessary or is like um, should be a requirement then I believe that that positions the unnecessity of art as necessary yeah that's <laughs> it's sort of a, it's, it's so a, <laughs> interesting because I I, I love that yeah. and that makes a lot of sense and then how I thought of it is very different hmm okay so what what that means to me? Okay, we it's it's like maybe it is the same. I don't know. It's but like it's, a human right. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but it's like there's striving, mm-hmm. and a lot of people spend their lives striving. That's why you trade your time for money. Yeah. Right, because you you get you have to eat, you have to have shelter, uh, you have to you know have protection, you you have to drink water. You know those are necessities. There's very little outside of that that's truly a necessity, right? But just to live and breathe and not perish, you there's five things that are necessities, right? So because art is outside of that as well as cars and, you know, cars not a necessity, 
Yeah, technically it's not. Mm-hmm. It's not. Here in Georgia, it's kind of a necessity, but <laughs> not not <laughs> but not technically. Yeah, yeah. not technically. Yeah. So because art is sort of outside of that and yet you still desire it mm. and you're willing to to strive more to to have it, you know, by definition makes it a necessity. You know, mm. we 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 buy the things and we include the things in our life that to us is a necessity. You know, otherwise it's like, it, it just changes the definition of what is necessity. Like uh, to some necessity is just sustenance. It's it's definitely not, you know, that, but it's it's like, I if I don't have art in my life, I might perish. Mm-hmm. And it, it elevates it to one of those things. To other people, having pets or animals in their life is a necessity, Yeah. right? Yeah, very true. So I don't know, that's how I thought of it. Mm. But I don't, I mean, I like what you said too. What's yeah, interesting, interesting is like, I mean, I don't know this as for a fact, but for myself, when you buy original art, like you don't want to get rid of that. It's something that you hang on to for many, many, many years. It's something that's just like always a part of your life and it becomes something. It's like you take it to every home you have. It's because it becomes something that's like part of your family and you don't, it's not like you're outgrowing clothes or like, oh, that's not my style anymore. Like art kind of, I kind of disagree. Really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like sometimes you buy art and then as your taste level changes, like maybe you do outgrow some art because I, I like, I see what you're saying that like art is really precious and you know, maybe nobody would ever outgrow one of your paintings uh, <laughs> <laughs> in terms of taste level or one of your paintings or, maybe it, it de- you know, okay, but it depends. It depends on why you bought it. Like yeah. I only buy art that grips my heart. And I, that's what I'm not letting go. It's that, yeah, it it's that on, moment on how, of transformation. Yeah, how they buy it. Because yeah. if, like if, it, if you buy it for a more commercial reason, like, wow, that color really, and I like it. It makes mm-hmm. me feel good. And if it matches my couch, well, if you get rid of the couch and that color, or that style is no yeah. longer what you're decorating in, you know, then, you know, I suppose that art is more expendable and you're going to get rid of it like you got rid of the couch. But probably not. That's not how I, well, a lot of people do that. Yeah, a lot of people do. I mean, I kind of do that. <laughs> like, well, yeah, I buy, but that, I have that's to be not, very, maybe it depends like, on how much, maybe it's like there's a bracket. Yeah, because and maybe like some people are more, more sentimental. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's really personal or I don't know. I was just thinking for like, just for us, for example, like buying a, that original by Eric Robitiel, there's no way I would get rid of that in the future. I mean, that's something that's going to be in our home always. So, and every piece I get, I would, I would keep that in mind. But you both really loved it and it had, it was, it it has a value to it. That's pretty high. Mm -hmm. It, it wasn't just something you picked up or you got for free or somebody gave to you. you We spent, yeah, our money on And it hurt a bit. And the only reason you were willing to let go of that money that ate into your budget, let's say. Yeah is because it meant something to you and 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 it represented where you were in that point in your life. You know, you were in your very first home together, right? And it represented a, a decision you made together and it just represents all of that and, and plus so much more. And so you, getting rid of that's like getting rid of a piece of yourself that, that was, it was so transformational at the time. And that's why art should cost money. So do you guys think then that like the secondary art market is selling out? (laughs) I don't think anything is selling. You know what? Here's selling out. Definition of selling out is doing something completely unauthentic and foreign to your true, true self just to make money. Mm -hmm. To me, that's more of a doing something that's contrary to your, to your core beliefs yeah, I just think that if you if you do anything in life that's contrary to your core beliefs and something you feel really strongly about, specifically where you earn money, if you if you replace like I I'm against that, but I need the money, so I'll do it anyway. Mm. That's being a sellout. Yeah, you know, at like if if you're a vegan and you work at McDonald's, I would say you know you might want to think about that. <laughs> you're a sellout. <laughs> you know, and 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 so uh, just because you make art that you love and you enjoy making 
and you sell it and somebody buys it because they also enjoy it, how, how in the world is that being a sellout? It's not even close to being a sellout. Mm-hmm. You're just sharing your art. You're being generous and willing to share your art with other people that value your art for a specific amount of money. Right. Because you put that price tag on there, typically. <laughs> like, and furthermore, you're going to make an entire business out of it. Yeah. Perhaps an empire. Yeah. So I just wanted to like highlight like the almost the entire conversation is like based around this concept that selling is bad. Like the whole word sellout is is like has this negative connotations to it, but that's just based on the idea that selling is bad. And selling isn't bad. Like if you think about the actual like core concept of selling and selling out of something, that's actually good. That means that you had something that was so valuable. Other people wanted it so much that they were willing to buy all of it. Also to me, it's just, it's, it's like, that's what deception does is mm-hmm. it, it blocks our mind from thinking. And so when I was a young person and I was deceived and I thought, oh, it's bad as a sellout, you should art for art's sake. I didn't, I didn't really comprehend even what I was saying or thinking or believing. Because if you think about it, all I wanted more than anything back then, and what um, I think most artists want is, you know, to make something, you know, with, with their heart, their imagination, their creativity, for it to be valued, for it to be appreciated, and for their voice to be heard. Okay? W- that's a human thing. We all yeah. want our voice to be heard. We want to be heard. And to connect with others. Yeah. And to connect with others. Exactly. And those things, selling and selling well and building a nice big business around it is what gives you influence. And influence is how you lift your voice and your voice is heard. Mm-hmm. If if nobody knows who you are, nobody's ever seen your work and it's it, you made it for yourself and nobody saw it, then... How how are you lifting your voice? How are you sharing anything? How are you being generous about anything? How are you connecting with anyone? And connection and our ability to connect with other humans around the world is like the core essence of what it is to be human. That's why we're here, you know? So now if your full intention is, I'm just trying to work some things out. I have some interpersonal, you know, issues and my art is very healing to me. And this is just, I'm only making art, you know, for me great. You're not a sellout and you're not, be- that's not, there's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to share your art. You don't have to sell it, but you can't tell other people who are that they're a sellout, you know, and eventually, unless you want to be stuck. Even if they are doing it for healing purposes too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Even if they are doing it for healing and, and for that person that's making it just for themselves, I think that, that that's just a piece of the journey. If that's how you are your entire life, then I would say, that it's not working because mm-hmm. the idea is to heal <laughs> yeah. and then you are the elixir mm-hmm. to those who need healing. So why would you want to hold your healing in just for you? It's, it's for others as well. And so the process is if, you, if you're making art just for yourself, it's only for a blip in time. Eventually you need to sell it so that the exchange happens and others are healed. Yeah, it's it's like selflessness in a way. Yeah. Like selling art is not being selfish or sell out. It's being selfless. Yeah. I think we should maybe talk about the like few questions back, like the root issue of all this, like what people like what is actually triggering to people. And I think it's I like identifying with the starv- starving artist identity yeah. and having feeling justified or Validated. Like they're living this noble life by not selling their work mm. and and just making a couple pieces a year and like living that kind of sacrificial. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that they're a martyr. Life. They are like this um elevated noble, like you said, person because they choose not to sell their art, because they choose the to path of suffering. In poverty and, or yeah. yeah. So why why is that not noble? Why is like choosing to live the bohemian uh starving artist lifestyle not noble? That's what it is. The bohemian. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, why are they mutually exclusive? Like I don't understand. You can make your art and still sell it. Mm-hmm. And then you don't have to hustle and waste your time so you can feed yourself. I mean, unless you have benefactors, but then you're selling your art. So it's yeah, like, exactly. I don't I don't understand I think, how, like, why would you want to, you have to feed yourself. So you have to work or somebody's taking care of you. Mm-hmm. Either way, 
You're not being independent, self-sufficient, and doing what you love and earning money doing that. So it's not it's not noble to go and hustle and you know swap your time for money doing this other thing that you probably don't care about. Well, maybe in, it's just in lieu of making art. Maybe yeah. it's just the idea of their art is so precious to them. They've spent so much time on it. They've spent so long, so many months on it, and it's like, how could I put a price to it because it's a piece of me or like that's I don't know. I'm I'm. Trying yeah, to think, I think from you that perspective. Yeah, that's what. That that's why, like, that's the type of artists who are feeling triggered about. I think you hit on something. In fact, earlier I wanted to bring that up about the preciousness of art. And um, here's the thing: is when I was when I was younger, and I and I felt the way that I used to feel. I felt that the the preciousness of especially it, especially when you're just starting out. Especially and- when you're just starting out, and if you're not prolific, mm-hmm. if you mm-hmm. if you are not spending a lot of time painting, and you just paint when inspiration strikes, and you paint every once in a while, then it is precious. Number one, number two, when inspiration strikes, it represents something you know big in your life. You know, like. I was really going through this. I was really going through that. And so inspiration struck and I painted. And so it becomes so precious. You you can't bear the thought of letting it go, letting it go yeah. or somebody else having it or putting a price tag on it just seems so vile. Mm-hmm. But that could be your choice. But to me, to me, and this, this sounds triggering, but to me, that's a really self-centered way to look at a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like, the reason you have the passion to make art and the talent or ability or aptitude, let's say, to do it, or you've bothered to put time in to learn, you know, how to do it, um, is is your gift or your your virtuous way to offer something, to give back, to create something that others will appreciate. And if you make more art and you become a professional where you do it every day and inspiration finds you working, I don't think it'll become so precious. And I think that then it's like, you can let it all go. It's 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 not so precious, but your art still feels, the specialness of it doesn't go away. Yeah. Just because you paint for hours on end and you create like, I don't know, 10 paintings a month, that's a lot. Um, well, maybe Ten for some people, for some people, it's not a lot. But yeah. depends on anyway, like the type of paintings. That for you make. me, it would yeah. be a lot. Well, oh. there was a time where you painted two a week every week. Yeah. So eight. Yeah, eight. Six to eight. To me, that's a good number to strive for for myself. Like six to eight originals, like good size, and yeah, I feel very prolific. Well, that's prolific, and that is that's that's a that's business. A lot of paintings per year. For yeah, if somebody paints two or three paintings a year. I guarantee you they're not painting 40 hours a week or even 20 hours a week or even weekly. That's painting sporadically Mm -hmm. every once in a while. And that doesn't pull the best work out in you. Yeah, they have like a false sense of what it means to make good work. Like they believe that you should like paint only when inspiration strikes, right? That's like one false belief that you should like paint very little because then it becomes more valuable uh, and it's very personal, right? Another false belief. And um, that's it that I can think of right now. What I was (laughs) trying to say is that when you paint that way and you just create a couple of paintings a year Mm -hmm. and they feel so precious, you might be worried that if you go the other route where you're super prolific, that those paintings aren't meaningful. They aren't special. They don't... It's not creating mm, the same feeling point. and it's not true. It's yeah. it's actually like more they're special. more special yeah. and you have you get even more connected to your work and what you're doing and you it's know not it just on a, one piece. You know it on such a deep level. Yeah, and for any artist who is creating all the time, it's a continuum. Like right now I'm working on uh, you know a few pieces that are in a series and it's not just this one piece encapsulated with these boundaries that this is the piece it's a continuum like it's a snapshot of a greater piece or a bigger piece when you work professionally and and professionally means you're earning money for it and you're earning money for it so that you can do it all the time Mm -hmm. as your profession then you're held at a, a a level of accountability with your time where you devote your time on a daily basis just like you would a job to creating art 
it pulls the very best out in you. You create your very best work. You're most creative. It, you're working in a continuum and a flow, a creative flow, where one idea begets another. And you're, you're really a, a true artist. If you just paint when you feel like it every once in a while and you're not constantly evolving and improving your craft and nailing your process and honing your voice and, and really becoming a master over time, I don't know. I think you're, you're a novice. You're an amateur. You're not actually a, a true artist in, in, a, in a very like, you know, true sense. Mm -hmm. Because the whole idea of an artist is that there's something exceptional and set apart. You know, if you're, if you, it, just because you're a cook doesn't mean you're an artist, but if you're creating culinary delights at a level that's up here, then you're an artist. It's a love of the craftsmanship. It's a, it's a love of it and a dedication, yeah, a dedication. commitment. And that's daily. Almost that's an not, obsession. Really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a daily thing. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's you put your whole heart into it consistently daily, every, every moment. That is an artist, mm -hmm. no matter what, what vehicle you choose, not just painting. And if you're not, can you imagine, can you imagine a, a chef, right? That, that cooks, few times a year puts out two or three dishes a year that's not a chef that's not a I, and I then they're like yourself. i'm an artist <laughs> i i i did two or three a year i'm an artist no you're not even a cook <laughs> you know you're you made food twice big deal you know <laughs> yeah that's true so professionalism you have to sell your art so that you can be a professional so that you can do it every day unless you have like a I don't know, a trust fund somewhere and you can do your art every day and you're fully taken care of and there, there, there is no need to, to sustain yourself. But it's hard to stay motivated if you're not selling it because when, when you are selling it, that's another thing. When you sell your art, you, you have that sort of um, fuel and motivation and, and uh, inspiration that, wow, this, this really touched somebody and, and they bought it and they live with it every day and they put it on their wall and it, it means something to them. It meant so much to them. They gave me 3000 of their dollars, you know, or they gave me 5,000 of their, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And it really meant something to them and they're living with it. So I'm motivated to do that again. That felt really good. That feels amazing. Yeah, that, it does. That my art, the muse touched me and I was this conduit and I created this fabulous thing and it touched somebody else and I got to be a part of that whole adventure. Wow, I, that's, I want to do that again, right? It's motivating. It's going to yeah. keep you working and, and, keep, and staying working will, will build your skills. It'll make you a master. It'll make you really good at what you do to where you are in fact an artist. And I think just because you hold a brush in your hand and you put paint on a canvas isn't necessarily meaning you're an artist. Controversial. Well, <laughs> I mean, why does that apply in every other field except painting? Yeah, no, it's true. I agree. And honestly, I think that every other field, when you do treat it obsessively like that, is an, is an art, artist. You know, like, like business the, is an art. Like Marketing is an art. Like the CEO of GMC saying, yeah. we're not in the car business anymore. We're in the art business. Yeah, Exactly. Because they've made their, they're striving to make their cars art, a mm -hmm. work of art. So much craftsmanship, so much excellence, so much devotion, passion, care, commitment. All of those attributes is what defines an artist. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you have to live in a, in a mindset. I wouldn't even say a place or whatever. It's a mindset of abundance, of prosperity, of, of not lack doesn't matter what you have in your bank account. You can be the most prosperous person on earth and have nothing in your bank account. But it's a mindset. A prosperous mindset is what will give you the personal freedom that you allow yourself. You, you are empowered to go after it to get you to that level where you're you are an artist. You're mm -hmm. making art. Yep. I think that like this whole conversation, it was, first of all, it was so good. I think, I really hope and I believe that this is going to change a lot of people's minds about art and hopefully about money too. Um, because I think that like there are so many misconceptions out there about money and like people just think money is the root of all evil. But really it's the love of money above everything else is the root of all evil, right? Like that's the true saying, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure that's it. So yeah. if I'm not, you know, let me know in the comments. But uh, 
anyways, I, I really love this topic. Um, you know, to all those haters out there who think that creating 30 paintings uh, to have in a gallery is selling out, then you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> I mean, 30 And let is me like, know in the comments why you think I'm wrong. <laughs> bare minimum. <laughs> yeah, it's the bare... <laughs> isn't it so funny how that one little... I don't that, know how like, that was that triggering. That one video <laughs> kind of sparked this whole entire concept and realization that um, the unnecessity or why art is unnecessary makes it necessary. <laughs> you know? Should you want to even separate the business of art as in like marketing selling your art like from the creation of the art and the oh, like purity the artist, and the artist can stay pure be, just creating the art and somebody else can manage the business or I something mean, like that that is possible if for people who want that it's there's nothing wrong with it i think the real question is is if you don't do that are you a sellout like if you love the business of selling art are Does you that make somehow you a, bad a sellout? Person? Yeah. If 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 money is almost or yeah, exactly. the business of it is almost as learning how to turn your art into a business, right? It, and and using your art for business and and enjoying that whole thing does that make you a sellout? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think that's more definitely not. I think business can be its own art form where it's very creative and you're constantly thinking of like putting yourself in the other person's perspective in their shoes and how art can relate to them and reaching those people. That's all, that's all it is. You're trying to figure out how to reach more people and affect people with your art. So yeah. And, and really if you boil down business and the purpose of business, how businesses exist, how they thrive, really it's businesses, the best businesses bring the most value to the most amount of people. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's literally all that you have to boil it down to. So it's like, if you don't like bringing value to people, if you don't like, and, and maybe it's not your forte, you know, which is what we hear a lot of artists say in the beginning before they take the mastery program. But uh, <laughs> when, when it's not your forte, then okay, I can understand. Maybe you want someone else to do that for you because you don't really like doing it. And maybe as a result of like not liking to do it, uh, you know, you feel insecure and you want someone else to do it, but that does not make business bad. Like so many people, because of, I think, you know, these big tech cor corporations or these, you know, these businesses. Well, it's indoctrination. They teach you that in college. They teach you that, yeah. that media teaches you that, mm -hmm. that business is bad. It's all corrupt. Capitalism is bad. Yeah. Uh, or how about sales? Or yeah. you have to step on the lowly to get to the top. Yeah. Those, those it's concepts. a zero sum game. Yeah. 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 And of course there's examples all throughout history of people in business doing that. Those are bad people, but it wouldn't matter what they were doing. There's also bad people that um, are artists <laughs> or communists, you know, yeah. it's like, so I don't know. There's good people, there's bad people. But I think that for an artist to find their voice and build a personal brand around that true authentic voice and realize you as the artist are the brand, your art is not the brand. You are the brand, what you represent, what your core beliefs are, what you're passionate about, what, you know, makes you cry and pound the table with your fist. That is your brand. And that is, <laughs> and that is what you put in your art. Yeah. And, and well, I mean, th what is behind that? Yeah. yeah. Is your brand. I'm just thinking like, I, I know we get what you're saying, but maybe you should elaborate a little bit on that. Like what, what well, was your, what's like what your, makes no, you pound I your think, fist on the table is your brand. I think it's understandable. Yeah. Like, like what you're passionate about. What you're passionate yeah. about. What, what riles you up. What yeah. makes you cry. What touches your heart. Mm -hmm. What, what, um, your story. Yeah. Your story. Yeah. And, and usually those things are, you know, we all cry in movies but we cry for different reasons, yeah. you know? And sometimes I'll, you know, I'll see this movie and I'll like, oh, this is going to make Jake cry. Like I already <laughs> know, I kind of already know the, the trigger points or what, uh -huh. or you told me the other day, or you told me that he cried in a movie and then I saw that movie and I'm like, oh yeah, I know why. Hmm. And it's because- Oh, it was Avatar, Avatar. yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's because, um, you know, it's like what we've overcome, you know, that pain that we've overcome winds up being- our, our superpower and what we're most passionate about. And so your business is an extension of that. And how you build your business, how you build your brand and the choices you make in that is fun. It's creative. Like Demetra said, it's like an art form. And um, I think that is the beauty of why artists should sell their art. And, and it's almost like, like you were saying, if you don't sell your art, then you're a sellout. Yeah. Because 
you're you're robbing yourself and the world of that beautiful, amazing thing you have inside of you, that that greatness, that courage, that ability to overcome your circumstances and and paint and create and and make beauty for the world. You're robbing people of that and your touch on business. If you don't like the way business is done out there, do your business different. Exactly. Build your business different. Mm-hmm. Show the world, show the world through your business. Be so good and pure and wonderful and amazing in your business that you prove to the world that, you know, make that an art. Mm-hmm. Make that a part of your art form. It's like, I don't know. It's, don't just sit on a high horse, you know, yeah. t- condemning other people. That's right. For treating their art like a business because you don't even understand how business should run. Right. And it's really about a personal brand. That That's the S. It's your story connecting with others in a meaningful way to the point where they want to give you money for something that you produce that has value that you put a lot of dedication into and you darn deserve it. Yeah. You know? Woo! <laughs> yeah. So I'm curious for the people who are watching this, if you've made it this far and you aren't convinced that you're a sellout if you don't sell your art, why? Let us know in the comments. No, I'm, I'm genuinely curious why. Like why, what, what is it? And if you can convince me, like, wow, I would be amazed. And but. I just have one request. <laughs> yeah. That when you do that, do it in a, calm, meaningful, thoughtful <laughs> way minus the F word. Yeah. <laughs> just just that. Well, I mean, it, that's just if you want to... Um, be taken seriously. Yeah, be taken seriously and, you know, uh, like... <sighs> <laughs> not bring more negativity into this world. <laughs> right. You know? Because there's ways to have conversations without being nasty and hateful. So Yeah. Anyways, so I think that this was a super fantastic conversation. Mm -hmm. And if you made it to the end, if you're watching this to the end, then clearly that means that you're interested in business as an art. That means that you are interested in selling your art. You probably somewhere within you at some level agree with what we've been saying. Agree that art is valuable and you believe you would love to exchange your art with other people for money. Uh, And if that's you, if you're watching this, then you should check out the mastery program because in it, uh, we show artists how to make a living from selling their artwork because it's a noble and it's a high calling for you to sell your art to other people because you're br- you're bringing value to the world you're you're providing the those people out there who need your art uh, with beauty on their walls every single day and you're changing their lives yeah. and those people are changing other people's lives the the effect that you have with your art is multiplied it is uh, scaled across the world so yeah. if you want to change the world with your art if you want to be a positive uh, influence on this planet, then join the mastery program. Uh, And we can't wait to see you there.